let's begin with the fallout from the Cebu Grey report, which is dividing the front pages this morning. The Mirror says it proves the government were laughing at us all, while the Mail points to photos of sandwiches and orange juice and simply asks, is that it? Well, it follows the Prime Minister's apology yesterday as details of those Downing Street lockdown parties finally became a bit clearer. Well, with me now is ITV News UK editor Paul Brand and Alison Phillips, editor of The Daily Mirror. So, front pages are interesting this morning, aren't they? Bit of a mixed mm. bag. Yeah, morning, Lorraine. I think there's a big divide about whether it's time for Boris Johnson to move on or move over, essentially, yeah. and that partly depends on the kind of political angle that the paper is coming at uh, each, uh, the, these, these stories. Mm. But ultimately, the truth is out there and it's now up for people to decide how they feel about all of this. I mean, I think the Sue Gray report really confirmed a lot of what had been reported over the past six months about this party and culture in number yeah. 10. As you've just been hearing, wine spilt up walls, karaoke. You know, I don't know what songs they were singing, but it wasn't the same tune that everyone else no. in the country was dancing to, you know, as they were abiding by these lockdown regulations. The Prime Minister says he's been humbled by all of this, and the big question is whether he'll be humbled further, whether Tory MPs will move against him. At the moment, mm. it doesn't look like that's going to happen. No, it doesn't. It's interesting, isn't it, Alison? Do you think we learned anything from the Sugri report that we didn't already know? Um, I think there were some really interesting details in there, which I wonder if people that sort of work in the political world, they just think, oh, well, that's just what it is. But I think for, for people, ordinary people in the country, viewers today were really, really shocking and also quite saddening. For me, the thing that really leapt out at me was the idea they were being really rude to the yes. security guards who said, this has got to stop. Yes. And they were rude to security guards. They were laughing at them. They, they laughed at the cleaners. So, so cleaners who wouldn't have been able to see their families uh, or, or extended families at mm -hmm, home mm -hmm. were having to come into work the next morning and clear up vomit because they'd been drinking so much. They'd been drinking till half past four in the morning. And wine and they, off and the walls. Sick. They were fighting, wine on the walls, leaving the place in an absolute state. And it's that kind of culture of contempt, I think, for other people yeah. that I think is going to be really hard. Well, I think it's impossible to shake because I think that is the culture, unfortunately. And then there's those interesting WhatsApp messages where where somebody says something, oh, I think we got away with that last party. So they knew exactly what they were doing. Mm. And, and there was an interesting panorama earlier in the week where there were people also saying, um, well, Boris Johnson was coming into the parties. We thought that he was fine about them. So it's that mm. culture of rule breaking right. and contempt for other people. Yeah. It's really sad. It, it actually is really sad, but he will survive, it would seem, Paul. Yeah, and his get out clause really in all of this that he was trotting out yesterday is that he didn't realise these were rule-breaking parties because he only attended up to a certain point. You know, he'd go to a leaving party, make a speech, raise right. a toast. So he wasn't singing say, the karaoke thrown up I mean, or we don't know throwing white on the wall. On the I mean, we, no. yeah, we don't, we don't, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so his argument is that he had no idea what was going on once right. he'd left the room. You know, you might question that. He does live in number 10, don't forget. Mm -hmm. He lives in the flat above. Uh, so would he have heard yeah. these raucous parties going on downstairs, given that they were going on until early hours of the morning? Often they were spilling out into the Downing Street garden where, you know, maybe he would have heard it from the top windows. But I did ask him that yesterday and he said, no, he wasn't aware. And he absolutely insisted that he has not lied. He has not misled Parliament when he said that no rules were broken. How extraordinary. It seems that not a day goes by that something happens, that he's got to apologise for something. You have to start asking questions about the position because I mean they should be light years ahead they should be I mean Alison what what do we have to ask ourselves about about the opposition that they should be doing better surely well I think um there's an interesting thing with Boris Johnson in that clearly there is something about his whole persona that a lot of people find attractive and for a long time I think a lot of people were prepared to accept yeah he lies yeah he's um he's in it for himself yeah he, he but we'll, we'll, we'll go with it anyway. And they found that quite um, engaging. But increasingly you think beyond that, is he actually, is he actually that good? I mean, it, it's, it's gone, we lurch from one disaster to the other. Um, so there's constant sort of state of chaos, which is how he, mm. he survives. And it's kind of confusing for people. And he's, it's, I think it's difficult for the opposition somehow to, to get a grip on, to kind of like say, um, and it's this sort of thing that when there's always chaos, there's no chaos. And I think that's where they're really struggling to make their point. Mm. I mean, somebody, not myself, but somebody described him as a greased piglet. Mm. And you know how difficult, I don't know who David that Cameron. Was. was it David yes. Cameron? It was David <laughs> yeah. Cameron. I mean, they don't like each other in that, so it's perhaps <laughs> no, not too surprising. I kind of get that vibe <laughs> from that description. But, you know, piglets are hard to catch and a greased piglet is a very difficult thing to catch, one would imagine. But shouldn't they be doing better? Shouldn't they be cutting through more? 
Well, look, I think Keir Starmer's had his own problems, isn't he? And we've got to remember Indeed, that, that, that the party that he picked up after the 2019 general election had just suffered its worst defeat since something like True. 1935. So he always had a very long way to go to, to rebuild the party. And he would argue that, look, actually, look at the progress we've made over the past two years. I'm winning by-elections. I'm doing all right, all right-ish in the local elections. Um, but, yeah, there's still a huge way to go before Ooh. they're in a position where they're going to win the next election, at least with a majority. Yeah. Um, and now Keir Starmer faces the prospect that he'll have to resign anyway over That's his true. own That's beer true. and curry. Do you get the feeling, because we, we are, it's very mixed, the reaction that we're getting from, from our viewers. Um, some are saying, you know, they're, they're enraged by all of this. I mean, absolutely enraged. And we'll never, ever forget it. Others are saying, come on. That's in the past. Move on. There are bigger issues here that we've got to face, you know, like cost of living crisis, climate change, the war in Ukraine. Do you get the sense that people just want to move on now? Enough now? I, I think it depends yeah. on your experience of the pandemic, actually. I think you're right. And if you kind of cracked on during the pandemic, you, you suffered a bit because you weren't able to socialise and do the things that you really wanted to do, like go on holiday, and it was annoying, but ultimately you got through it OK and now you're ready to move on. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. But, you know, I interviewed someone uh, in the past couple of days, Ernest Boateng, who saw... lost his wife. Mm -hmm. He was a nurse yeah. and she was pregnant. Yeah. And he was left bringing up their child alone. He had no support from his family because of lockdown. Of and course. they couldn't come round and, yeah. and look after him. And he couldn't say goodbye to her. He never saw her before she died. So for him, how does he move on with that? Well, Especially when this, this stuff makes his pain worse, he told me. Of course it does, of course it does. But inevitably, we will, Alison. That's yeah, the thing. I think so. But Never forget, though. But that, I think that's it. It's like mm. anybody who's had um, a relationship with somebody where they feel they've been lied to or really badly treated, at some point you sort of think, well, OK, we're going to keep going, get up in the morning, go to work, whatever. But that doesn't take it away that you've been badly treated and that you've mm. been let down, and that always remains. And I get, and you know, Paul, Paul's job, my job at the Mirror, is just to put the information out there. And then really it's up to the Tory MPs. They're the only people now who can decide whether they think the country wants to move on or whether their country is sort of permanently sort of lost faith. Mm. Be interesting to see what happens with the by-elections, won't it? That's mm. going to be a... Next month. That's going to be a real barometer, I guess. Mm. Thank you both very much. Thank you. I, I suspect this is not the last time that we should <laughs> be talking about this, but thank you. It's great to see you both. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.